What if the narrative of early 15th century Chinese maritime ventures as we know it is merely the tip of the iceberg? This is the question that drives the compelling research of Sheng Wei Wang, a scholar who dares to challenge conventional history. Wang's intriguing theory suggests that the famous fleet of the Ming Dynasty, led by Admiral Zheng He, may have sailed far beyond the limits traditionally attributed to it. While the standard narrative confines these voyages to the Indian Ocean's coasts, Wang proposes an expanded scope, potentially stretching to the Americas, Africa, and even the elusive southern lands of Australia and New Zealand. At the core of Wang's argument, we find the 1602 map, the Kunyu Wangguo Kwantu, or KWQ. Wang insists on its Chinese origin and ties to the explorers of the Ming Dynasty. Could it be that these seafarers navigated around Africa's southern tip, as Wang suggests, and reached the Americas well before Christopher Columbus? This audacious theory, though met with skepticism by many historians, offers a captivating alternative view on the age of exploration. Wang sketches a compelling image of the possible routes taken by Chinese mariners. She proposes that, by 1433, they may have already journeyed around the southernmost point of Africa, reaching as far as Canada on their seventh voyage. This timeline disrupts the European-centric narrative, suggesting that Chinese explorers could have navigated the waters of the Gulf of Mexico and even crossed the Atlantic Ocean before Columbus embarked on his historic quest. But Wang's investigation doesn't stop at the Americas. Her research extends to the far reaches of Oceania, suggesting that Chinese explorers may have landed on these distant shores nearly two centuries before Europeans. Examining Australia and Antarctica's depiction on the KWQ, Wang points out unusual features that align with the geography of the unknown southern lands, hinting at an unprecedented Chinese exploration of these territories. Wang's research isn't confined to maps alone. It also encompasses archaeological evidence. She incorporates the findings of British surveyor T.C. Bell, who discovered ships embedded in New Zealand's landscape, bearing Chinese imprints. These discoveries hint at a potential Chinese presence in New Zealand, challenging the established timelines of European exploration. As we delve deeper into Wang's revelations, we might wonder why Chinese mariners would have set out to circumnavigate Africa. Wang suggests the answer lies in simple economics. By attempting to avoid taxes imposed on ships passing through the Red Sea Canal, these mariners may have sparked a desire for uncharted exploration, leading to voyages that have, until now, remained largely hidden in the folds of history. The narrative takes an unexpected twist with China's imposition of a sea ban, resulting in the nation's withdrawal from the global stage and the destruction of the treasure fleet. The subsequent absence of large-scale Chinese exploration and potential neglect in preserving maps contribute to the enigma surrounding these pioneering voyages. In conclusion, Sheng Wei Wang's exploration narrative compels us to rethink the extent of Chinese exploration in the era before Columbus. The Kunyu Wangua Kwantu, with its intricate details and anomalies, serves as a tantalizing clue in this historical mystery.